No breakthrough today in the fiscal cliff negotiations. Could this be a starting point? Out front, Republican Congressman James Lankford of Oklahoma, incoming chairman of the Republican Policy Committee, the fifth ranking position in the House GOP leadership. Good to see you, sir. Appreciate your taking the time. What about this idea Thank of you. raising taxes on everyone? The math actually in this case is, is, is much more promising. It works much better. Right. I, I heard your lead in on it. And you said this is a new idea floated by Howard Dean. Actually, it's not a new idea. There are several Democrats that have floated that for a while. You'll hear kind of the code word for it is we want to go back to the Clinton tax rates and talk about the Clinton economy, that we had a much more vigorous economy and growth, and we should go back to the Clinton tax rates. What that really means is all tax rates on all Americans go back up because the tax rates were, de uh, were brought down in 2001 and 2003. Uh, so it's not new, and no, I, I don't support that. I don't think that's a great idea at all. all right, they could well, slow down the economy. All right, and, and, and you know what? The truth is, when you look at economists' evaluations, it would slow down the economy. Raising taxes right now on everyone or, or some people, whatever some people that was, it, it would. Okay, there's no question about it. But if the problem is that we have a lot of debt and there has to be some pain, whether it be in cuts or the form of higher tax revenues, that means there has to be some pain. I mean, look at the math, $2.8 trillion to go back to the Clinton era rates. That's 17% of our debt wiped out overnight. If you're worried about the debt, how can't you look at that seriously? Well, the, the reason I would say that is that's not actually not going to be 17% of our debt on that because right now we're running a trillion dollar deficit every single year. Now, if we went back to zero, if we were at balance and we're taking that on, that's true. But right now, with the fourth year in a row that we have over a trillion dollars in deficit spending, that deficit and that debt continues to climb. So it doesn't really wipe it out. And the, the challenge of it is, is what does that do to the overall economy? We're, we're not just dealing with one tax increase right now as well. And a lot of people lose track of that. The Affordable Care Act, the first tranche of the taxes actually begin on January the 1st as well for people making $200,000 or more right, it's also or for on people the that have large medical bills. Right. So that's that already starts coming up. This is talking about an additional tax increase on top of that tax increase. Okay, but what about what Bill Clinton said? He said once things start to get better, and that's a real a, a crucial point that he was making. He wasn't right. saying doing it right away. Once the economy starts to get better, taxes do have to go up on the middle class. Do you agree with that? I, I don't, actually. Uh, and the reason being is that right now, if you look at the real math on it, in 2007 and 2012, we have the same amount of revenue. Now, obviously, 2008 and 9, we had a dramatic drop in federal revenues coming in, but we've slowly climbed back up. Kind of the dirty little secret is revenue has gone up every single year of the Obama administration, and now we're at historic highs, the same as we were five years ago. The difference is our spending has increased a trillion dollars from five years ago, but our revenue is the same. You go back yeah, to 2007, our, is, is our things deficits to try to help only the economy, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's the payroll tax cut extension, which uh, your party uh, supported, right? It's extending unemployment benefits. It's, it's things like that. It's the war. Right, and that's, that's going to be the challenge of the, of the whole perspective right now. We've got two philosophies. One is saying we're spending too much. That's hurting our economy. The other one's saying we're not spending enough. That's hurting our economy. So there's obviously the last four years have been more of a focus on spending more to stimulate. I'm not sure that's going to work long term. If we continue to pile up more and more debt, we've already crossed 100 percent of debt to GDP. I don't think that gets better as you get higher. Right, but, but your, your line of thinking, see, the only thing that confuses me about it is I feel like we end up in a situation where all you do is keep cutting taxes. You start to have a revenue problem, right? You give a tax cut to the middle class, you don't want to take it away from them. You give a payroll tax, you don't want to take it away from them, right? So that you keep giving out things and you never take them back. Well, that, that's the same thing we deal with on all the spending side. The stimulus spending in 2009 was intended to be a one-year anomaly. The problem was it wasn't a one-year anomaly. That was actually added into the baseline, and all those agencies, all those individuals keep receiving that same amount of money. So that one-year stimulus spending is now stretched into four years of stimulus spending, and it is headed into its fifth year. So we're dealing with the same thing. That is the challenge right, of this. But intellectually, we really are right, an impasse in yeah, philosophies. Right, exactly. But intellectually, what I'm saying is you're saying the Democrats are doing that on the, spend, on the spending side, right? Now, you know, I, that's, a, that's a separate conversation conversation, but let's say that they are. I'm simply saying you're doing the same thing on the tax side. So we end up losing revenue thanks to Republicans, and we end up spending more money thanks to Democrats, and the whole country keeps going to a worse place. Yeah, and it makes it a really tough situation. The context is really important on this. In 2003, when tax rates were brought down, it's because the economy was really dragging. There was an increase in the economy that happened in 2004, 5, 6, 7. And then in 2010, when we were still at a very bad place, the president and Democrats that still had the House and the Senate during the lame duck said, the economy's really weak. We can't raise taxes on this on anybody, including the upper 2%. And they chose in a weak economy in 2010 not to do that because they knew that would hurt the economy. 
quite frankly, we have the same economy now that we had two years ago. Uh, consumer confidence is up, but total GDP growth has actually gone down the last mm -hmm. two years ever so slightly, but continue to go down. We're not in a better spot now to raise taxes as we were two years ago. Tom Coburn has been out uh, talking about the fact that, that rates need to go up on the top 2% in terms of getting a deal done on the fiscal cliff. Here he is on ABC News. Just want to play it. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll read it to you. It's a graphic. We have no leverage on that. So whether we want taxes to go up or not, they are going to. We can't stop it from happening. The real elephant in the room is entitlements. Taxes are going to go up at the beginning of the year if you don't do a deal, right? So the only deal you could do would have them go up on fewer people than they otherwise would. That seems to, to me to be that someone like you, a Republican right now, you don't have a lot of leverage. Right, and that's the challenge when you're dealing with Democrats that, that like Howard Dean and others that say, you know what, let's just raise it on everybody. And that creates this situation where we say, no, that's a bad idea. We do agree with the majority of folks to say that the majority of taxes should not go up on anybody, but we also believe that it shouldn't go up on the upper brackets. The proposal that's out there right now from the president, people look at it and say the upper bracket just a little bit. Dividends on the upper bracket would move from 15% on December 31st to 43.4% on the 1st of January. We think that's a really big cut. And what would happen is, the wealthy would stop doing stocks that do dividends. Stocks would then say well, they're not going to do dividends. And what well, that ends up hurting is seniors that are dependent on dividends and pension funds that are dependent on dividends. So it does have a trickle down effect in that. Right. It certainly could hurt seniors. I know historically, though, changes in dividend taxation haven't really affected stock prices, which is crucial. But, uh, but, but fair point right. on, on the elderly. But it does affect it. it it, it, it does affect the number of stocks that offer dividends. Uh, once dividends went down to that 15% rate, more stocks started offering dividends as an incentive, and a lot of people ran to that. That would obviously go away, which would cause a major shuffle among senior adults now. Congressman Langford, thank you very much for the time tonight. We appreciate it.